Hello, in this video I'm gonna do a guide on how I prepare my models. I've been printing a lot of Star Wars models and, and several other models. I'm doing videos on those and I get a lot of requests on how do I prepare the models and what's my process. So in this video I'm gonna try to create a guide on how I do things. There are probably a million other ways to do things. <laughs> so it's not uh, something that maybe applies to your product, but this is how I, I do things with, with the models. So stick around and we'll continue after the intro. So before I have the model printed out, I have to slice it, of course, in the, with a slicing profile. And I'm switching over to the desktop here. And here I have the Baby Yoda model uh, loaded up in, in Process Slicer. And the settings are basically uh, optimal settings, uh, 0.12 millimeter model. And in the print settings, I'm using 10% infill and the gyrate infill type. Um, layers are 0.12, um, two parameters, seven top layers and, and five bottom layers. And if needed, I'm having the supports on. Um, they're placed everywhere. Um, so when I slice the module, I have the, the supports as needed. This is, of course, depending on the module, uh, what's the best setting. but. This is basically the, the settings in, in Process Lesser. I'm using Prusament PLA. That's a really consistent filament and I'm quite happy with that filament. So I'm, I'm using that one. So I print this out. So here I have the object. I've done a little bit of sanding here in the, in the back, but I will show you that in, in more detail. Uh, I removed the supports already, but that's just tedious work sometimes <laughs> with players to get the supports off. But I'm going to show you my sanding process and, and what I'm using. For the plastic parts, I'm using this. Uh, it's a kit of, of, of different grit of sandpapers. It's a, like a mesh. It's a new type of, of material to, to use. And instead of a sandpaper, it's a, like a grit, um, depending on the grit level, how fine it is. So it's a, it's a cool cool product I'm using. So I'm going over the model, just sanding off all, all the issues and especially under the supports up here on the ears. So I spent a good amount of time sanding the issues off and trying to prepare as much before I do the primer. So this can take a while depending on the model and this is a one part model but sometimes I have multiple parts and I have to glue them together and I'm going to work on, on sanding, sanding this down to an acceptable level. I'm starting here with a 240 grit paper and we'll end up with 400 grit. And cleaning supports and, and other issues, I have this knife, it's from FlexCut, and this particular knife is called Pelican Mini, or Mini, Mini Pinnacle. And this uh, type of blade is KN19 Mini Pelican Knife, it has a really good grip for the hands, and I use that to, to clean out plastic issues and, and supports. Um, it's easy, easy to use. Um, it's really a sharp blade. Uh, you have to be careful. And I use that to, to remove sharp ports and, and these use. So a combination of this knife and sandpaper is a uh, tool of choice. <laughs> Basically, the more time you spend on this part, uh, it's going to be easier in the painting process. <laughs> and depending on the model, uh, if it's like a metallic uh, shape, you want to go with a really smooth finish, I will end up using a finer grit on the sandpaper. But if it's a cloth uh, material, then I often just stick to 240 grit or even just 180 grit to leave a little bit of texture on the, on the model. Don't want to destroy the the fabric, <laughs> so to speak, with getting it too smooth. Um, in some models, the fabric 
or the material is even modeled in somewhat and in this model it's a little bit uh, modeled in so I don't want to sand away the features too much but I'm basically sanding away all the, the printing issues and all the things like here's a, a small uh, issue in the plastic um, I didn't get that sanded down and now I've pretty much gone over the model with a 240 grit and I'm switching over to 400 grit and we'll continue with the sanding Now I think I've got it in pretty good shape and it's ready for the priming and to prime I'm using this uh, filler primer uh, what I got to the local store and basically a grey filler primer so I'm gonna do a coat of this and get back to you when the paint has dried so now the basic priming is done and I've started to clean up some areas most uh, of the underside uh, there's some drooping of course in the model you can see here uh, there's some rough areas and I use the pelican knife to to clean those out and I go over each, each of those problem areas and also with the primer it's easier to see where you need to work like here on the top model maybe difficult to see on the camera there are some layer lines visible because this is a top layer and I can easily see I need to do a little bit more something in this area <coughs> so I'm basically cover over the, the most obvious areas with a knife so now uh, my next step is to go over the whole bottle with a flexible sandpaper it's 400 grit and I'm doing that in, in a water bath makes, makes it easier and just clean out uh, the dirt or the paint from the sandpaper as we go so I'll wrap over every part of the model um, it's easy to clean out uh, as you go sanded away all the problem areas so the model is getting pretty smooth and I'm going to do one coat of, of sanding with the 800 grit so I'm going to continue so now I have everything sanded down like I want to um, depending on the model and the color scheme I might do airbrushing or this paint with brushes uh, but in this case I'm gonna do a little bit of airbrushing at least on the coat side to, to get some color in the main coat and the head and then I'll use brushes to get the details so I'm gonna set up my airbrush so I'm using Valeo colors um, acrylic paints um, I have a like a set of those and then I have some other colors as well, acrylic paints that I sometimes use to get the right colors um, when I mix a, a bit of color I have this airbrush kit uh, I bought it here in Iceland and it seems to work quite well I'm not very good at using it though <laughs> I have to do more practice but this is what I have so for the basic coat it seems in the screenshot of the movie or the episode uh, it's like a light brown with a little bit of green tint in it so i'm going to try to mix a little bit of brown and green and, and white to get that color i think i got it pretty close now i have the 
first layer I'm gonna let this set a little bit uh, leave it to dry for a few minutes and it seems to me there's a little bit of red tint in the coat so I'm gonna add a little bit of red into the color and see if I can get that effect and it's very subtle just a little bit on the part here on the top and on the hands and at the bottom so not evenly coated it's so just a shading effect mostly so now I have the, the basic coat covered and I'm gonna hand paint with a normal brush the green parts don't want to mask out the coat and try to airbrush the head I think it's a better idea to just use a brush now I'm gonna paint in the details of the nails Put a little bit of yellow on the brush, uh, marking the tips as yellow. I first did a mix of green and yellow, and then uh, bright yellow just on the nail tips. So it's like a two-color nail. <laughs> see a small amount of yellow there's some like pink or orange color in the ears as well so I'm gonna put that in and then it's a little bit brown color around the eyes as well so I'm gonna add in a little bit of brown around the eyes like a mix of green and brown. I'm using a sponge to blend in the colors. Uh, apply a little bit of color and then use the sponge to distribute it. Basically what I've been doing is to do some blending of colors to have the color not so uniform. So you can see a little bit of shading in the, in the head piece. Um, the hand has a little bit of dirt and the feet has a little bit of dirt on it. And I'm basically going back and forth with different shades of gray and brown. And, and, and the little bit of red or, or pink color in the inside of the ears. I'm just trying to emulate the photo I have from the movie, or it's a screen grab of the episode, so to speak, <laughs> that I'm watching. So this is uh, slowly coming along. What I've been doing is uh, using a sponge with a brown color to get some shading and then a white color to get some highlights and playing around uh, around the cloth to, to make it not so uniform color. I used the airbrush to get a uniform base color and then the sponge to, to mess it up, <laughs> so to speak. And same with the, with the face and the head to get some uh, dirt in it. And, and Trying to emulate the colors in the movie. I have to add a little bit of more green in the in the top part But it's more green on the top and then more brown in the, in the, in the cheek areas so I have to add a little bit of green in here as well So It's uh, going a little bit back and forth with the colors. There's no straight <laughs> path <laughs> to the final result So 
for cut to record, but I painted in the eyes, this is a pure black, it's uh, completely black in the pictures, there's, I don't see any colouring in the eyes, they're just completely black, so I painted that in. So here you have it, here it is all finished up, uh, I painted in the black eyes, I forgot to record that part, <laughs> but uh, I've done the weathering, and the blending of the colours, highlights and shadows, all the details, like the nails and the pink or orange color shading in the ears it might be a little bit less uh, visible, but uh, it seems that they're so thin the ears in the movie that the light shines sometimes through it and there it's more, more pinkish and in some scenes they're more green, <laughs> so difficult to, to see. But this is the, the final product, so to speak. So I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. This is how I do my painting on the models. Uh, it's a mix of airbrushing uh, and painting, and before that a lot of sanding and using a filler primer and, and sandpaper to get the models right. I started to use my resin printer lately, and that saves me quite a amount of time on, on sanding. <laughs> but still I have to do some sanding on it, but it's... Uh, more work on the FTM printing and printing in high detail with good filament is key. But I hope this video was informative to to you guys that have been asking on, on how I do my painting <laughs> process. But uh, I think for now this will be it. Uh, I thank you for watching and, and I'll see you in the next one.